All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, I will put a link to the STL for this in my GitHub, along with I have uh, an outer pattern you can print as well. Uh, in this case, for my needs, um, made the outer pattern so I can put it onto my project, use that as a guide for my router, uh, and this fit perfectly. All right, so if you haven't seen this on TikTok, uh, we have four push buttons. Um, this is set up to work with uh, ESP Home, uh, with Home Assistant. Um, you can, you know, if you're familiar with coding, you can use this, uh, I guess, for any code. Honestly, if you're to that point, then you don't need to watch this video. All right, so there's all four push buttons. Uh, each button at the end of this will end up doing a single press and a hold feature. So it gives us eight actions within the four buttons. Uh, we also have a digital potentiometer here. Um, along with push button of that potentiometer. And then we're gonna have two LEDs or two NeoPixels embedded in this as well. We have two little small holes right there. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, as far as wiring, probably not the best way to do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and use these. Um, all right, we're gonna start off with, obviously we need a ground for each one of these buttons. Um, we're gonna see if we can go ahead and just put a common ground across all of these. We need a ground for each NeoPixel. Then we're going to need two grounds for a potentiometer. As far as the potentiometer, um, I typically I ran out of uh, my singles, so went ahead and just used this guy and desoldered the board. So on the potentiometer side, uh, we have three pins. Actually, it's for the potentiometer, a ground, and then two pins that will go to our uh, ESP8266. And then we have two pins over here, and that's just for our push button action. So, let's see, first I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that for my ground side of the potentiometer, that I'm not gonna have any issues, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use the weight of this to push down. It's gonna go to this ground pin. Just make sure there's no common. All right, just gonna try to save on wiring just, just a bit here. All right, so I know it's gonna be hard for you guys to see. Let's see if I can line this up potentially in a way. All right, what I'm gonna try to do, if I can make it work, I'm gonna run a ground all the way down to one side of my buttons all the way down to the potentiometer and hopefully hit the two pins on the potentiometer that have the grounds that are needed as well. Just try to save on on some wiring here. So go ahead, get that end off. Let's see. I almost want to just do a bare wire, but I'm not sure if I want to do a bare wire or not. But I'm gonna go ahead and attempt it. Why not? Oh, first wire is gone. Try this again. This will do this in sections. I do apologize for the bright light. This is just the setup I have currently. And I'm um, half blind, so I need a light. Just like always with these projects, you gotta remember to have fun and enjoy it. All right, that's just getting clustered. All right, I let's see. I'm gonna go grab a wire. This will be edited anyway. All right, so I just grabbed a piece of Cat5. This will work. 
just fine for our needs. Might end up using some of this instead of uh, destroying the few jumper wires I have left. I don't know why, but for some reason, whenever I use Cat5 for crap like this, which I do probably more than I should, I tend to use the solid brown as my ground. All right, well, that one came off a little easier that time, like it should. All right, there we are. Take my glasses off so I can see. So I'll go through and do a little bit of this and then show you what I'm doing here. Now the other purpose for this, I mean, keep in mind is, <coughs> excuse me, is we are going to have multiple, uh, you know, every single one of these needs a ground, including the NeoPixels, and we only have one ground uh, pin available on the Wemo. So anything we can do to try to clean this up is helpful. All right. See what we can do here. <laughs> oh, let's coat this. All right. <laughs> yep, holding this bare wire soldering while wow, it gets hot. Wow, it just seems like it's taking longer than it should to cool down. All right. Bend this down, just make some room for the others. Now, well, something like this doesn't necessarily have to look pretty, it just has to work. <laughs> That's just something you say when you know it's going to turn out looking like crap, right? All right, we're getting there. We're almost done with this wire. All right, so it's kind of hard to see here. Common wire going to one side of the switch. I am hitting on my potentiometer here. Alexa, cancel timer. The potentiometer here, I'm hitting one side of the push button. 
and then I'm hitting the center pin for the ground needed for the potentiometer side. So one central ground. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. This is kind of, this wire is a little rigid. And my Wemos will end up getting tucked in right here. So I want it to be semi-flexible. All right. I'll uh, work with the NeoPixels next. Let's see if, uh, I don't want to say cheat, but let's see if we can bring the ground from this NeoPixels up and hit the ground here. Go ahead and clean these up just a bit. These were used prior. I personally love these NeoPixels. Alexa, cancel timer. I love NeoPixels. Uh, they're fairly cheap, easy to work with, and you can do quite a bit with them. So these just have three pins, uh, five volt ground and data. All right, so let's take So our ground wire here. Now, as far as the NeoPixels, we do want to daisy chain the data portion together. Uh, we're looking to come into one, come out of that one, and go into the other. And then we'll break them up into two segments in the, in the software side of it. Uh, it's easier with my hands, I guess, maybe. Do do do. I'll just turn on some background music. All right, so just put a little little leg there on my ground side. It helps that when it sits down in here, it'll sit and hit perfect on there. So. I love how that just teeters. All right, let's give this a try. All right. I want to glue this in now, but I know there's a good chance I'll end up covering up my leads here. Trying to get sick. <laughs> uh, last one I did was quite a bit more of a mess. Trying to make this one a little cleaner for you guys. All right, so it's holding that NeoPixel in place. Off the extra ground. All right. Now this one back here. All right, 
get both hands in there for a sec. That might turn out fairly well. So, seems like this NeoPixel is sitting in here pretty good. Now, the Wemos is going on this side. So, I'm going to end up tying the ground in probably somewhere in here. Uh, as far as NeoPixels, it's going to come out of the Wemos. It's going to go into my first, onto the inside. The, coming out of the outside there, it's going to go into my second NeoPixel. Um, now, I do also need 5 volts uh, between the two. So, let's go ahead and set, set that up. Yeah, I think I'm going to bring the 5 volts over here into the Wii mouse just to give us some room to pull it out and maneuver with it. All right. Bend this over, hack it off. Guess I should start on this side, right? You know what? Before I screw myself there. I'm going to go ahead and put on a wire for the data. You guys see that? I grabbed the other wire, thinking it was my solder. All right, this is going to be a little tight. All right, I mean, that actually didn't seem horrible. So I went to the center pin for my data, that wire. Put that off the side. Go ahead and put the five volt on now. <laughs> Sorry, I need to come back this way. Starting to get a little tight in here. It's better when the softness is done, I'll have better lighting. All right, just gonna double check, make sure I didn't get any connection between my data. And my five volts, which can't really tell. Had a really heck of a time telling. It's like always, I don't know if I'll skip over this or. I think it's good for people to see the mistakes. Not so much the mistakes, but the hassle. None of these projects are ne necessarily easy. All right. My 5 volt leg on. Neil Pixel's trying to pull out. I don't want that. All right. I'm going to cut this guy right here.
handy dandy wire strippers right there. Yep, I pulled on too hard. All right, like we were able to get back back in there without much fuss. And it's supposed to sit. There we go. There we go. All right. Stay in there, you little bastard. Hopefully, I don't get hit for that one. Oh, let's bring the wire out of there. All right. <laughs> Gotta love the struggles. Struggle is real. <laughs> All right. Let's throw some stuff out there. I right, remember data in going into the first needle pixel and we're going to come out and we're going into the second needle pixel. You know, it's a good feeling when you get done and it actually works. <laughs> so let's not get ahead of ourselves, I guess. All right, so I have a ground going across um, all four buttons, the potentiometer, both NeoPixel, the data coming into the first NeoPixel, coming out of the first, going to the second NeoPixel. <coughs> no, I'm sorry. I have the data going in, and I have 5 volts, which, you know, Yep, I brought that one from 5 volts over to this, thinking I was doing the data. So, move that over to our 5 volts. No harm, no foul. Actually, let's make this easy here. All right, just want to leave a nice spot open for the 5 volt feed in. All right. Go ahead and put a little fresh solder on the data or, uh, data coming out. All right. We're getting somewhere with it. <clears throat> ah, seems like it'll reach. Figured what a good Saturday project. All right, I need to try to get this down here onto this center data. That seemed too easy. Take this to the data in. All right, so as long as nothing's messed up. <laughs> oh, well, you can see it in there. So we got our first Neo Pixel down here. Let's get that put into place a little better. Our data coming in, coming out of the first Neo Pixel, going into this data. The second one, our ground obviously tied into our main ground rule here. And I have a 5 volt feeder coming time between the two. So let's go ahead and put our other 5 volt 
or let's put our five volt in. All right. All right. All right. Hopefully the mic's working all this time. All right. Now, I know I shouldn't do this, just in case I do have an issue, something's crossed. I'm going to go ahead and put some damn hot glue on there. All right, now I'm stuck holding this for a moment. I should have lit a cigarette. So we are slowly getting there. Let's see. Do I have a green jumper wire for ground? Yep. All right. Hopefully that's good. Nope. Oh, sorry, folks. I need to continue to hold that. Maybe I'll speed this up. All right. Let's see. Yep, time for some testing here. All right, let's put our ground. So we have our main ground reel. All I'm doing now is just tying on to that ground reel. Push that guy back down in place. All right. If I was smart, I'd fire this up now. I'd connect it to the chip, fire it up, and test the NeoPixels. But I said if I was smart. All right. All right. So let's see, let's see. All right. So I got four push buttons. Let's go ahead and go with. You know what? We're going to use green. Why not? Show me his back just a bit. All right, I don't believe I soldered the other side of these push buttons. These are just momentary push buttons, by the way. I'll put a link for everything um, in my GitHub or below.
All right. These two. In. The next two green. Get one in a second, folks. All right. As I say, I'm going to have to cut this video down. 30 minutes, I think, is way too long up to this point. Oh, it's been a while. My soldering iron keeps shutting off. All right. The other two for the push button. Done. All right. So now the only thing I need to throw wires on um, is going to be for the potentiometer. And let's see. We'll go with uh, make sure they're long enough. Go with orange. All right. Yep, it's on my lap. Then cut these down just a bit. Tweezers. Yeah, I mean, I do use these tweezers a lot when I work on PCBs. Hold resistors and certain things down. But when it comes to stuff like this, I still use it way more than I ever anticipated. All right, so I'm going to use black, or black, wow, blue <laughs> for the actual push button. All right, I think we have all the wires in place. I think I may, I think I might. All right. So I'm going to have to go back to the computer in a few moments and try to map out some of these just so it's a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to do the software, I'll just match my other project. Um, so I do know the NeoPixel. I'm going to go to receive. I should have already learned my lesson. Using my mouth for that. So we're gonna go to RX. Now I want the chip to go this way. Okay, so let's go to RX. So let me see if I can hold this and hold this and keep it steady. All right. 
Clean enough for me. <clears throat> All right, so that guy will go in there. Let's go ahead and do our five volt. <clears throat> And let's do our ground. It should be the same length, right? So. All right, so go through and I'm going to show you what I did here. So let's see. Start a new project, new device. Now I've already had another one so I'm just gonna mimic that see so bedside guest um, now typically for this chip you come down to pick a Pacific chip and we'd go down to the most D1 mini hit next I'm gonna skip uh, I don't care to install it yet edit now I'm gonna override all of this um you can you're probably going to want to keep all of this and just add on to it um here for the heck of it i will go through and explain this to you so first off up here is the name of your chip so this right here bedside guest needs to match the name up here uh, if you want to do any future over there updates um logger just going to display our logs um API and the encryption key. This is for Home Assistant. Um, over there, password. Keep in mind, you want to save both of these. Um, and this is where you're going to enter your Wi-Fi information. And then this is um, an AP. So if you connect it and it doesn't connect, sorry, if you power it up and it doesn't connect to the internet, um, you can go ahead and it's going to create its own portal. You can connect to it and then enter your Wi-Fi credentials. So I'm going to get rid of all this because I'm going to copy and paste in my other one and I'll kind of run this through you. Run this through. Um, all right. So in this case, I have my, my two, you know, all that information stored in another file so I don't show it here. Um, this is stored in my AP file and then my, this is for bedroom Wi-Fi for that side of the house. Um, under substitutions, we have light one, light two. So these are the two pixels. Um, and in this case, I can adjust the brightness of each pixel. Um, so let me go ahead and drop this one down to 11. I have, I have noticed if you go anything below 11, that it just doesn't work. All right. So we're going to start here. First off, this right here is our potentiometer. Pin D3, D, D4. And what we're going to do is, what I have this set up to do is to control um, my surround sound in the bedroom. Um, how I'm doing that is through Home Assistant, I have a Broadlink Pro and through Home Assistant. Um, it sends signals to that, signals from the Broadlink Pro to the surround sound to turn up the volume. Um, now, it, it's the unit I have is, I mean, it's probably like 10 years old. Um, and it has the same signal for, actually, no, I'm sorry. It has a you know, different signal for up and down, which is obviously needed. <laughs> so what this is doing here, and just to try to make things easier on myself, um, these entities are being pulled from Home, home Assistant. So what, th what this does is when you turn it clockwise, and I want it um, to be above 51. Now I have this right here, if you notice. Uh, max value 100, min value 0. If this is above 51, um, actually, well, so let me start first off. So right here, when you, t when you turn it, it's going to delay a second, and it's going to set this back to 50. So essentially, it's going to reset itself every time you turn it. When you turn it, uh, when you turn it clockwise, if it's above 51, it's going to go into Home Assistant, and it's going to send the command bedroom sound volume. Um, in this case, it's not shown here, but this is, uh, I believe, volume up. And then same thing right here, if it's below 49, volume down. Um, I'll explain that in a moment. Then we have uh, the NeoPixel right here. We have two NeoPixels. 
connected to our RX pin. Now I have these broken out into two segments. Um, this is light 1B, light 2B. Now this part right here is just pulling uh, certain things from Home Assistant. So this is my outside door status. Um, outside door, inside door, garage door. Um, so these, yeah, these are just some of the items that I have inside a home assistant. And what this does is on this state change, for example, my outside door status. So if all the outdoors, uh, outside doors are open or closed, what this does is when that status changes, if any of the following conditions um, are true. So I haven't, you know, or on this case. So if the outside doors, inside doors, or the garage doors are on, if any of those are open, what that's going to do is it's going to turn this light on red. Now the brightness above is substitute, substituted right here. Now do, 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 for this one, now if all of these are off, it will turn this to green. So, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. If you have any you know, questions, leave me a comment. I'll go further into it. Um, there's probably a better way to do this. This is the route that I went. Um, this is for the second LED, and this is for my, uh, this is my coffee pot. Actually, no, this is, sorry, this is for my coffee one on my desk. This is for my actual coffee pot in the kitchen, office computer, or this is for my desk heater. Um, so same thing. If, if, if any of them are on, it will turn it red. If all of them are off, it will turn it green. And I'll demonstrate here in a bit. So, do, 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 let's get down past here. All right, so we got our first button, uh, D6. And this is just, you know, you can copy and paste this, and you can change... Uh, Change the action right here. So this is the service. This is the entity. And this is right here, if you notice, uh, this is for double click. This is for single click. So it's more so a hold feature. Um, D2, same thing. D5, same thing. D1, same thing. Um, D7, same thing. So this is the actual push button on the potentiometer. So let's go ahead and I'm going to save that. Now what we do is we go to install, manual down, download. There's other ways to do it. This is the way I've always done it. I prefer to do it. Legacy. It's going to go through and it's going to download it. Now I've already flashed this, so I'm not going to actually go through that. The actual flash in it, but walk you guys through it. So we're going to let this go through and compile real quick. What I'll probably do, by the way, is I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll add substitutions to the top um, just so that way you don't have to dig through the code um, to figure it out. So I'll clean that up. That will be uh, my GitHub. All right, so now that I download the bin, I use ESPL and Flasher. Now the link for this is in my GitHub as well. We go to Browse, select that file. Um, at this point, you would if it's plugged in, unplug it, plug it back in. We hit right here, it's going to discover COM port 11, and you go ahead and hit flash. Like I said, I'm already flashed, so I'm not going to do that. All right, we're going to back out of this, and we're going to go to logs. Going to connect. So now if you notice, see if, uh, do, 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 if I turn this clockwise, if you notice, it's going from 50 to 51, 52, and it's resetting. If I turn it counterclockwise, it's going down. Now, the reason I set this up the way I did, um, now if you have Sonos, there's different ways you can do this. Um, it would actually be quite a bit, quite a bit easier. Uh, just do a little bit of math in there, and you can actually get it to match uh, what the rotary, rotary encoder is. The reason for this is save the volumes, um, you know, all the way, all the way down. And the last time I used this, you know, it happens, like I said, our, our scale is from 0 to 100. So the last time we used it, 
I happened to, you know, turn the volume up. It was at 75 or 80. Um, you know, I happened to manually turn it down with the remote. Now it's down at zero. Problem is I go ahead and turn this. I only have 20 clicks until or so until I max out to 100. So this way it always just resets itself. Um, and basically every time the number goes above, in this case 50, it turns the volume up. Every time it goes down below, it turns the volume down. So in this case, you know, if I just continuously turn it, it's just going to keep hit, pinging it, you know, volume up, volume up, same thing, volume down, volume down, volume down. Now we hit the first button. Notice it registered. Uh, single click. Hold this down. Double click. So on. I'm, right now I'm screwing stuff up in the house. All right. So as far as the NeoPixels. If you notice one's brighter than the other, let's see if I can go ahead and adjust that. Uh, you know what? Actually, I already, I already adjusted that. Um, I just need to actually flash it. So once you've already flashed it the first time, um, now we can go ahead and do a wireless flash. So this one was set to 50. This one was set to 11. I want them about as low as it possibly can get so it's not bothering me. So let's see if they match. Now, if you don't have the NeoPixel sitting there just right, that can change the brightness as well. Um, so we'll just play back and forth until they somewhat match one another. Hopefully, I got them seated in there fairly well. Give it a second. Wait for it to reconnect. All right. Oh, you reconnected. Now, if you notice, it hasn't changed, but that's because the state, of, you know, the state of anything or state of any of those devices that are controlling those haven't changed. So right now, I'm gonna turn my coffee warmer off. If you notice, now it dimmed back down. All right, Alexa, close the office door. So one of them is tied to if all the doors are closed, the office door is the only thing remaining open right now. It should go to green. There we go. Fortunately, I can't show the other one because my coffee pot in the kitchen's still on, office computer's still on, so that's going to remain red. But when all that stuff is shut off, it'll go to green. So when I lay down at night, I can look at the two green lights, and I know that everything is shut off, all the doors and all the windows are closed. So, Alexa, open the office door. Give it a second. There we go. So if you notice, now it's red. All right, I appreciate you watching. Um, try to get better at this. I know I kind of ran through this one. I do apologize. If you have any questions, you know, please leave in the comment, and I'll elaborate on certain things.